So what I want us to do is to start becoming more conscious, start choosing things in a better way for ourselves, and start creating a life that's going to gear us to really take advantage of the opportunities that are going to show up for us in the, the years to come. This podcast is brought to you by The Integrated Human. We work up, down, inside out to plug yourself into your potential. If you want to see what we are up to and what's next, sign up to our newsletter or follow us on social media. If you like what we are doing, we really appreciate it if you can like our post on social media and YouTube and help us grow. Welcome to the Big and Small Podcast. This is Jason Shields, and I'm Big. And I'm Marit Gabrielsen, and I'm the tiny one. Hey, this is season two. Welcome, welcome. Season two. Did you ever think we're going to get here? Hell yeah. I knew it. One of us knew it. I have faith, confidence, and belief in our products, services, and ideas. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Season two. Welcome. We have big plans for season two. Oh, yeah. Not going to tell them what there is. Because it needs to happen first. <laughs> no, we're going to unleash the surprises as they, as yes, they show up. And, yes. and it's going to be beautiful. We got so a lot keep, in store. Keep, keep tuned. We yeah. have, we have a, what did you say? Faith, confidence, and belief in, in our, our... Product, services, and ideas. Yes. Yeah. That one. Mm-hmm. So, I wanted to talk about a few things today that I believe are is important. And the majority of people who kill themselves due to suicide do that because of disconnect, because of a feeling of being alone or hopeless or they feel the world would be better without without them, right? And interestingly enough, percentage-wise, that happens mostly in men between the ages of 13 and, and 28, and in generally very well-off societies. Because, I mean, let's face it, in not well-off societies, all you have to do to kind of fend yourself is not try. Yeah. right? But very often, when you're in a survival situation, taking your own life is the last thing you're thinking about because you have a very concrete relationship with the people around you who need you, the things that you're doing, and you're busy. You have something to do. You have something to do. And you have very concrete mo- uh, measures and goals and feedback from your environment that what you're doing is valuable and what you're doing is right. Whether you're 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 starving and you need to get some food and you get food and you eat, it's like whoa, yeah, that meant something. Ooh, yes, that did and something, exactly. that changed something, that was important to do that one thing. Exactly, and you can feel that, right? So the the issue is is that very often that many men walk around stuck in their heads and they don't have a relationship with their feelings. And though they may not feel it, they're having feelings, but they're not relating to their own feelings very much. So they feel not connected. They don't feel their environment. And in well-off societies, there's no challenge. You don't have to run up a a steep hill. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do... You can sit at home and work. You can sit at home and eat. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do... you, You... Almost don't have to get up of your gaming chair to go to the toilet. Almost. Yeah, almost. Yeah, they're, they're probably going to invent the, you know, they have like cup holders. It's yeah, going to be know, something it's else, gonna, my it, It's on its way. You, you know, know it's going to happen. It's going to look, look like a full-on Matrix uh, oh, yeah. thing. You, you don't have to do anything. We, we are we are super entertained. Stimulated. Stimulated. As I was reading the other day that you <laughs> get like 30,000 commercials in your face a day. Lord have mercy. Thirty. Thousand commercials. Oh my God! People trying to sell you stuff, mm. and that's on top of all the things that you're watching and scrolling past. And like I told you the other day, it's like before COVID, we, sc- we you scrolled on Facebook, not Instagram. Facebook, ninety meters a day. That's ninety meters of finger movements. And guys. you don't think that's a lot? Go over to a to a course, like a track, like a track, and scroll your thumb for ninety meters. <laughs> it is a lot. And mm. that was before COVID, and during COVID, it has increased. They're going to have the Scroller Olympics. Scroller Olympics. I can scroll it one minute, 30 yeah. seconds. You know, it's insane. And we have, we have saw everything in our fingertips, and we are so stimulated by everything we watch and see. And um, I was talking to someone the other day, 
And I said, you know what a big challenge is? Mm. Look at a wall for 12 hours. Mm. You know what strength is? Look at a wall f- for half an hour, 10 minutes. But try t- 12 hours, just look at the wall. And she said, oh, that sounds like the worst thing ever. Mm. And then you should do it. Yeah, then you need it. Then you actually need to do it. Yeah. And if you think it's no a breeze, then you should also do it. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the thing that many of us have an idea of who we are, what we do, and, and all this. And, and men, especially, are very interesting. Because, for example, in martial arts, you know, most men walk around feeling like they have this hidden button, the beast mode button, that if they had to, they could push that button and fuck everybody up. They could just destroy everybody. They could beat beat down everybody. So that's why you see so many ridiculously out of shape people who've never walked a flight of stairs get in fights and bars and stuff. And you're like, are you kidding me? You know, you've never been in any f- violent confrontation with your body, including walking stairs. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then you're going to fight somebody because you have the beast mode button because testosterone kind of does that to our heads, right? Uh, as men, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I would know. I don't have um, that button. Yeah, among other things. But anything. Anyway, the, the, the beast mode button is a real thing. In that same in that same way, you know, people have an idea of who they are. They have a subconscious, sometimes conscious idea that the the heroes that they read about or the heroes that they see on TV or the books they read are them. Right. You know, it's like you as a young man, you want to grow up and be Conan. You want to be, you know, Superman. You want to be the Flash. And of course, as you get a little older, you realize that, okay, maybe I'm not Superman because I can't fly. But if I could fly, I'd be that motherfucker. And then you're like, well, yeah, I'm pretty strong, but I'm not as strong as the the, the mountain. I mean, the mountain's really strong. Well, okay. You know, you kind of get social normalization. That's what, you know, basically, um, you do not get a substantiation of universal principle. Those are big words meaning convincers. You're not convinced about your own <laughs> immortality or supermanness anymore. Right? You ha- you get a reality check. And in the hood we say keeping it real. Keeping it real. Right? Yo. Yo yo. So the important thing is to realize that you do have a hero inside you. You are unstoppable. It just looks different than Superman's unstoppability, right? Mm -hmm. You are somebody who can go above and beyond. There are a lot of, like David Goggins, you know, there are a lot of people who show you what's possible. Uh, Amachi, the the hugging saint, who on her 50th birthday hugged 25,000 people and was there and didn't take any breaks, didn't take, I mean, she was focused the whole time. You guys try to give 100 hugs, try to give 25,000. I mean, imagine what that's like. And even if you don't have her connection just try to hug 25,000 people yeah and in covid time of course you're not gonna not hug, try it yeah, right now people, but right? give it one and a half year yeah S- stand outside say i want 25,000 hugs yeah today yeah that's it i mean it's it's an it's, unbelievable it's insanely it's, work it's a lot of work and it's to it be takes, that and to be present with it is um, yeah and she's present with all of them right so mm-hmm. that's another kind of invincibility or or supernatural superpower. it's a superpower it's supernatural right so a lot of men think that there's like, okay, I'm a hero inside and I'm going to slay the dragon. I'm good. It, you know, uh, my life is If a is dragon shit, wants never... to come up, if a dragon all of a sudden walks in Wangen, which is downtown, the hood and boss, mm-hmm. I'm going to slay that dragon. Slay it. Slay it, Marit. Slay it, yes. right? That's the whole point that uh, they're very ready to take any kind of acute or short-term confrontation. Okay, now we have to save people from the build- burning building. That's how you see yourself as a hero. But what about the things that go over a long period of time? What about the monsters that are not living on the outside of you, but some of the monsters that are living on the inside? Big pause. Think right. about it. Think about it. Now, what about depression, sadness, anxiety, greed? You know, those kind of things. Envy. Those are demons, right? They're they're very strong, negative, inward-going emotions. And the question is, can you live with them and still function? Can you live with them and find some contentment and joy and meaning in your life? Are you able 
to have them and not be them. Do you understand? This is a very important point, men. I'm talking about men's health right now. You guys should wake up and listen. This is important. Are you able to live with your negatively charged emotions and still be content and have a meaningful life? Can you be filled with anxiety, paranoia, fear, terror, horror, panic, and still go to work? What most men do is they just shut their emotions off. But what happens then? That's the thing. You, you, they think they shut it off. Yes. But it's not... It doesn't work like that. It's it, it you. It's not like uh, you have like a um, big river. So let's just redirect the water somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's in you. That's mm-hmm. the problem. It is in you. So what's it starts leaking, mm-hmm. and then you get unconscious about it, and then your head often starts spinning. You get unconscious, strange behaviors. You get random stuff in your life you start getting physically ill because you if uh if it starts to push its way up and goes to your subconscious brain you end up doing stuff that you do well that's not even me what am i doing and if uh, you push it down you can get physical illness i mean of course stress can lead to all kinds of illnesses right so Mm -hmm. they were saying that um uh psycho-emotional stress is a cause for very very many illnesses doesn't mean it's all in your head. It just means it's a byproduct. Your body re- responds to your mental emotional states, right? Mental emotional states, not just your mental state, not just your emotion, but mental emotional. So you can have high emotions, very strong emotions, or low emotions and very strong low emotions, mm-hmm. and at the same time, have a very clear understanding of what they are and still be fine. But if you have not worked with your emotional body, men... What happens is you push it down, you repress it, you ignore it, you escape from it. What's going to happen is the least of the things you're going to feel disconnected. The least of them, that the least of the side effects, the consequences is feeling disconnected. And when you're isolated, you don't feel any meaning or, or purpose. You have no survival need. You're not really able to affect your environment because there's no need. You remember the the friend I had that was a multi 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 millionaire, mm. and he would like get a supercomputer, and two days later he'd stop. He was like, "Oh, I'm going to program," and he never went any further. And then he got yeah, a hot rod. Him in one of the other podcasts. Yeah, exactly. You guys should go back and listen. Amazing. Ran around in his underwear, mm-hmm. getting chased by the police in in Fort Lauderdale. Anyway. The point is, and that was a survival situation, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but but the point is, is that if you have nothing that makes you feel, then you feel nothing. And when you feel nothing, your self-esteem goes to... Down. Yeah, it goes to to nothing. (laughs) To not swear too much. It goes down. It goes down. Very down. Yeah. Or to shit. Yeah, it it goes to shit. And either you sabotage yourself in your life or you often can make the wrong decision and kill yourself. A lot of people do that. And with COVID and the isolation, because they don't have social normalization, which keeps you from feeling like a hero on one side, but also gives you connection and relative understanding of yourself and and all of that. They don't have social normalization because of the isolation and lockdown. I talked to one of the psychiatrists at the hospital here, And uh, she was saying, she's like one of the bosses there, and she said that, I don't know how high the suicide rate is, Jason, but I will tell you one thing. It's way over 30% increase after we started lockdowns. So here's the thing, my friends. Start connecting with the people around you. Get some social normalization. Don't isolate yourself, number one. You can isolate yourself in terms of wearing a mask if that's what's mandated or keeping yourself clean or whatever, but you need to interact and you also need to have something you're working with. doesn't matter how good your life is or how shitty your life is. doesn't matter how hard things are, how easy things are. You need to be engaged. You need to be engaged in people and you need to be engaged with one person specifically, and that's yourself. Work with your own dragon. 
That's it. I think that is is one of the things that we have have a, a lot of picture of. I, we talked to some of the guys the other day, and we we said so. What does struggle looks like? Yeah. What? How does struggle look like? Mm. And it. All of the people I was talking to, and they have different things they're working with, but it looks so different for what they thought it would look look like. Because yeah. it would be a big dragon or a bear or they they didn't they got bankrupted or s- something would have some big outside stuff would happen mm-hmm. but the struggle is in with is within and not on the outside exactly and it just looks different from what you thought exactly the war one of my very favorite <laughs> modern philosophers Marit Tissedal Gabrielsen <laughs> uh, MTG 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 <laughs> said that this whole covid pandemic thing is our generation's war we haven't had a a war in this part of the western world for a long time since second world war of course we've had we've waged war in afghanistan we waged war in korea and we had we the waged, cold war over us Vietnam and, stuff, and all that stuff but real war where people are going to shoot each other that has not happened for a long time so this is our war this is our in a way, our exception time, our time where we have to and And adapt I'm just and saying, if you think that's wrong, just look at it. Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah, we're not shooting each other, mm. but people are more depressed than ever, more disconnected. Government's mandating stuff. People are terrified. People are losing their job. Yeah, economies people are being wrecked. Are wrecked. How, how is this not people a... People are having to use papers and show who they are. And How is they, this not a war? It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's... It's changing everything. And it is a part of the cycle of... So it's it's okay and it's not okay, but it's a part of the cycle. But that's why you have to be aware that it, this is a war you're in. Yeah. So that you're having trouble connecting. Mm. Of course you have. It's a war out there. It's a war. You just can't see it. It's not like we said. The struggle. You maybe we thought it would be Nazis walking in the street. No, it's it's the government shutting down because of a virus, and you can't even see the virus. Right. It's a it's a faceless enemy. So that's make it that makes it even more harder. Mm. And because like yeah, you can play video games now and and uh, and be online and meeting and on teams, meeting on teams and stuff. But it's not the same. No, it's not the same. And the social interaction is not the same. And that physical touch, literally feeling something, is kind of gone, right? And, you know, I I have a really good friend. Um, and this guy's uh, an amazing athlete. He's an amazing athlete. Um, and he's struggling a lot right now. Because when they keep shutting down training and they shut down competitions it's very difficult to when your whole life has been focused on one thing your whole life you just want to compete you just want to compete and that's, suddenly that, the, that's the reason why you wake up the reason why you work the reason why you you eat the reason why you sleep is the reason for everything yeah and almost two years later they've been shutting down the training there have been no competitions we can't travel it's crazy and if you travel it changes so you can't actually kind of f- go focused on that thing you're going to do when you travel because you never know when they're going to sh- change the restrictions and it's always the pressure what if i get it not that he's necessarily he's not afraid of getting the, the the covid but that means 10 days in isolation yeah which he can't afford because of work because of because work. he's already on minimal work because his whole life is geared for jujitsu right for competition for being a world champion so think about how how insane that is. And you have people who have, you know, a generational business that's out of business suddenly. They've been in business for 150 years. Yeah. They survived two wars. Yeah. And then COVID's going to shut down. And then COVID's going to shut down 150 years of legacy. Yeah. It's crazy. How, so, and think about that person that had that business that they're great, 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 great. Uh, yeah, you know, that's 150 what years. Yeah, like, that's how many it. greats are that? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great. Build up, and then they, it failed with you. Yeah, that's it. You, and you couldn't do anything because you were shut down because yeah. it's a war. Yeah, that's it. And you couldn't even see it coming. Yeah, no, there's no preparation for this. Like many wars, actually, there's mm. some tension, and then everything's fine, and then next then week all it's of a not. sudden, yeah, what happened? So the point is, is that young men would strap up and be heroes 
and go and shoot the enemy. Yeah, you know, you, it's uh, you see from first and second world war, they were yeah. they were cheating on their age to be able to fight. Yeah, that's it. That's what that's where it and was. And women in England, I, it was that they they weren't actually allowed to work in the hospital, but they didn't have any more men, so they were kind of forcing themselves in there. Yeah, yeah. My, they, they didn't want to have them, but they're like we, our men are working. We're, we're working. working. Yeah, my dad, my biological father, he uh, he cheated on his papers and then when they found out who was 16 he had mo- his mom sign uh sign papers to get him into vietnam you know it's insane it's it's but that's not the way war looks now now it's much more psychological and emotional then you had war on the outside now mm. we have war on the inside we have is war the, on the time inside. for war on the inside yes exactly it's an inner war and this is so important that's why we started the integrated human this is why the big and small ca- podcast is so important, which you should definitely, definitely recommend to your friends and family because yes, we love here. this podcast and we, love what we're doing. We love it, but we even more than honestly loving the podcast, we love what the podcast does for people. Mm-hmm. We love to see the change in the people around us. We get messages all the time. We even get, we even got, I just have to say this because that warmed my heart so much. And because you never know. I appreciate everybody that sends us messages because I know they're taking their time to write us. But we had mm-hmm. a lady come by the the clinic because um, you know where we work mm-hmm. before Christmas and gave us handwritten notes. Yeah, about the podcast and that was amazing. Like I don't have, I, I can't. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. can't appreciate her enough. That's so. No, it's it's wow. Yeah. That's handwritten it. letter and yeah handwritten and today that actually before i was like oh handwritten means something now that's that's really from the heart and i'm and so proud of everybody that is listening and they are working and they're trying their best because we are at war and they everybody has it now i believe to one another this, this thing like it yeah there's some degree of distraction confusion depression sadness uh, loss, hopelessness in everybody's environment now because of what's going on. People were so busy just doing them and building their businesses and going to school and all that. But now things are disrupted. People are dropping out of school. They're dropping out of uh, athletic events. Yeah, I was reading they're now in, 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 in Norway. And, and in, in Norway, dropping out of high school is not very common because it's it's free. Yeah, It's kind of you, you, do, your, you do high school. Most, yeah. most of... You finish it's, that. It's very few people that don't do that. Yeah, it's it's, ex- it's it's exceptions, of course, but most people do that. But now, whole classes are saying, "Fuck this shit." Yeah, they don't want to go to school. No, no, because they're not allowed. Because they're to not go to in school. school. They're not in school. They're at home. Yeah, and that's the whole point. The whole point is that unless you are a very at risk human being, meaning that you have four point five comorbidities, comorbidities means. Things, diseases that will kill you, meaning four and a half, because it's an average, you can say four or five other diseases, and you're under 82, you're really not at risk for COVID, and you're not at risk for dying from COVID. So, especially when you're a young person and you're under 30. So, these people should be in school. But guess what? Because this is not just a pandemic, it's a war, they're not. And they're dropping out of high school. They're dropping out of university. People having to sit at home and do uh, internet uh, education as singers. They're singing over their horrible microphones on their Macs. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, that's just ridiculous. There's so much ridiculousness. And when it's, I mean, if it was six weeks, it was eight weeks, then, you know, shut up. But two years. But it's two years and it's so much up and down. Yeah. So, Mm -mm. but the... That if it's COVID or not, I think there was a, this would have happened to a certain extent, no matter how how you look at it, because it is yeah. time for it has been a, a time for a change. We have the way we were living was maybe not sustainable, and we were being very um, what's it called materialistic? Yeah, materialistic. But like yeah. we tell you, and and now we have to start. Mm. adapting a little bit more yeah we have to adapt a little more and another thing you know uh talk about validating the value of a government and all that stuff i mean to be quite honest 
before it was the government protecting you from the commies, you know, the, the Cold War, oh my God, the, the, the communists, right? And then suddenly it was the, the, the next phase, and that was, yeah, oh the, my God, it was... The terrorists. Terrorists. Oh, Osama bin Laden and the terrorists. You haven't heard about terrorism lately, have you? No. Think about it. And then now it's, oh my God, it's infection and COVID. Oh my God, it's COVID, right? So it, there's cycles with this stuff, guys. And unfortunately, we probably have a year and a half of this at least left. So what I'm telling you guys is be safe. Take care of yourself. Start now to engage yourself in your own inner process in your neighborhood. Make sure your friends and your family are okay. Interact. And okay doesn't necessarily mean because it's a different type of war. It doesn't mean that do they have food? Do they have toilet paper? Do yeah, they have water? Right. Do they have internet? No, right. but have coffee with them. Yeah, exactly. Do they know that they're appreciated? Do they know that they're meaningful? Do they know that they're okay? That's the question. Do the people in your environment, your mastermind group, your cohort, your 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 neighborhood, your peer group, your peer group, do they know that they matter? Yes, because and that you love them. It is. People are fighting wars now on the inside. That's they're, it. they're battling dragons. Yes, but they're on the inside dragons it's and not the outside dragons. dragons. Now, just as a little look into this, one time Maude said, well, you know, you say that we're total people. This was in the very beginning of her process. Long, long, long time ago, right? Yay. Yay. Right? And she <laughs> we're said, going there. Yeah. Well, well, one thing, you, you asked me a beautiful question, and, and you're really good at asking the, the, the critical questions. You say, so... I so, often, I, was talk, I most often do that when I'm just pissed off and very tired of you pushing stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> then the good questions come out. They like, come get out off me. very, Here, very not total. But no, it was a very total, just not very integrated. So what did I say? Yeah, well, it, was, it, was a, it was a very good question. I'm embarrassed and, already. no. Yeah. Shouldn't be embarrassed. This is perfect because it's very instructive as well. You said, "Well, you say that you're, you say that you, you know, we're total beings." And I said, "Yeah, we're total. We're like we're the full spectrum." Yeah, but you're nice to everybody and you're super positive and you're always happy. And I said, "Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, not really, but yeah, I, under, I understand what what you mean." And you said, "So, what about your depression and and sadness and hopelessness and all that stuff?" Most likely, I sweared a lot in there. I think. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I think exactly. I can't yeah. remember. It. I like, think I can. I can remember that conversation. Yes. <laughs> like, where, where, where's all that in you, right? And and what I said is that okay. Would you rather be friends with the devil inside or enemies with the devil inside? I want to be friends with him. You'd rather be friends, right? But a lot of people are like, oh, I have to fight the demons. No, no. You want to make sure that you're friends with the devil so that he controls or she controls the demons. First of all, acknowledge you have, if you are you are a total being, so you have a devil inside. Yeah, you and have. As much as you have the angel, you have the devil. Yeah, the one who says, take an extra cookie. Have the cookie. Do it. We had very different my, yeah, yeah, okay. my <laughs> devil now and <laughs> slit the tie. Yeah, right, like, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, that was dark. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> have right. a cookie and like make like slit the tires of all the cars. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> that was dark. Anyways, yeah, but everybody eat the has cookie. everybody yes. uh, as a total being, you you have to acknowledge you have yes. the the angel in you that will throw yourself on a puddle of water for an older lady and you have the one that said eat the cookies. Yeah, exactly. You know, the one inside me who makes me run run to help an old lady who fell down with a... Bro I have a broken hip, and she's the one that falls down. I run over to her with my broken hip to pick her up. Yeah. You know, and then you have on the other side of it, the one that's just basically can burn your whole life to, to the ground in a moment, and you just don't care at all, right? Yeah, so have to, first of all, just acknowledge you, acknowledge you have both of them. They are there. Exactly. You and acknowledge then it. you can start to be friends with them, right? Yes, and you befriend it. And weirdly enough, the biggest, darkest shadow inside you, if you become friends, doesn't mean that you're trying to be evil and horrible and, and all that to exercise your friendship with the dark side. I'm not, you know. Not doing old Sky, Luke Skywalker. Exercising the demons, right? Where What you're doing is you're becoming comfortable with the fact that you are a light and dark being at the same time. And then the dark side controls itself. So would you rather 
So the, you have the like the big big dog control the small dogs. That's exactly it, right? So you know, if you're going to say being sad is that a big dog or a small dog compared to hopelessness? Mm. Hopelessness is deeper. Yeah, hopelessness is a bigger dog that's than a, that's sad. That's a big, sad. much bigger hole. Sad's a chihuahua. <laughs> sad is chihuahua. Hopelessness yeah. is a Rottweiler. Yeah. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like the real, like like the real bad ones, the real ones that just fucking lay waste. Right. Sad is like, no, oh, that damn. It's cute. Yeah, it's a little cute compared to hopelessness, right? It is very cute compared yeah, to hopelessness. Yeah, desperation. Oh, there's you have another big one. Here. That's a German Shepherd, right? Yes. That's definitely not a poodle. That's <laughs> not a poodle. Frustration's a poodle. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> right? So frustrated. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo. yeah. Oh. Just look at my fur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it curves up. <laughs> this is frustrating me right now. You know, and why are we why are we making I, I my friend i'm sorry if you're upset I can just, <laughs> yeah. if we had like you you changed your expression compared to the dogs you were just oh. like when you became a poodle you just couldn't understand a math question or or position in jiu-jitsu or yeah or you didn't understand what your kid is trying to tell you and your, your hair just went poof yeah poodle exactly exactly <laughs> confusion confusion's cute uh that's Confusion's that's very cute. cute. Yeah, confusion. Oh, that's very cute. Right? He's a little bit dis- disoriented. Yeah, a little disoriented. Like I'm I, I'm I'm not quite oriented right now. I'm confused. I'm I'm really confused here, right? But so so what I'm saying is that when you understand the really deep dark things in you and you become comfortable with them and realize that they are not you, but they're things that you're having. Then all of the other ones become they, the dial, the volume becomes turned down a little quite a bit, and they kind of regulate themselves a little bit, and you don't have to deal with them all the time. So, men, listen men. up, yo. Now, why am I why am I excluding my sisters and my mothers and and all this? And listen, I'm not excluding you, but what I'm saying is that women have a much larger emotional spectrum and here's the thing because they are responsible for childbirth because they have to have a baby in their body growing and be uncomfortable for nine at months at least nine and months, 18 years and then, and a, then the, and rest the rest of their, of their life. life in the rest of their life exactly they have to bear things they have to bear it you know they say grin and bear it so that's what i was going to get back to the magnificent seven is an amazing cowboy film also based on the old film, The Seven Samurai, which I do recommend to everybody. Seven, The Magnificent Seven is also pretty good. So Seven Samurai, watch it. But the point is, is that there are gangsters coming in and going to take over a town and the seven, seven the cowboys come in and Magnificent Seven and they take out all the gangsters, right? They take out all the bad banditos. And little, the boy says, wow, mister, I wish I was just like you. You're a hero. And he turned around and said, son, what I do is easy. It's over in a it's over in a heartbeat. But the real hero is your dad, who every single day gets up and battles nature to make sure you have food on the table. Right? Now that's beautiful. To be able to show up and fight the odds with discomfort, with impossibility every single day and still provide value. That is a hero. That is showing up and doing the work. Now my question is. How many times in culture and pop culture do you see that person being the hero? No, we don't ever. And uh, and and um, now the struggle is not necessarily that you have to fight the environment to to grow whatever you're growing. It mm-hmm. is waking up, doing the thing that matters, eating, going to work, do what you know is necessary mm. when you're fighting everything inside you mm. that's it so i'm calling on the goddesses i'm calling on all the mamas i'm calling on the sisters i'm calling on the female power in the world sisters mothers goddesses please help the men feel connected help the men find themselves Help the men grow up. 
help the men understand that showing up and doing the thing, being quiet sometimes is heroic. Please, you already set a great example for us, but sometimes we need to put that in words. Sometimes we need to share emotional states with our mates, with our friends, with our peer groups. Sometimes these conversations need to be taken up with people that you think are okay because they don't seem to have, they're fine. No, no, I'm fine. Or oh, then you're not fine. Then you know you're not fine, <laughs> right? So, And if you think, if you look at all the the heroes you're watching on TV or playing in your video games, to actually tell someone, you know, I'm not fine, mm-hmm. that's big. Yeah. I'm like, I, I can work with not fine, but it's very hard for me to work when you say you're fine. Yeah, when you know you're not. When or I know we can, we, we can see you're not, but mm-hmm. you tell me you're fine. I can't help you until you tell me you're not fine. That's it. Because until you tell me I'm not fine, I'm super depressed, or I'm not fine, I'm having this and this issue. Or you just, you have to, what do you say in, in Norwegian? Get, come and go over the again. Yeah, to get over the, over the, the, the blockage or whatever you 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 have to get through. If you want to the, be the hero. Yeah. Just say it. That's it. And if you get a big lump in your chest or in your throat, you go in the right direction. That's it. Because it is not easy. That's the whole point. It is not easy. Then you wouldn't be a hero. That's it. Now we're gonna turn this around. You ready? MTG. Yo. Yo. MTG in the house. We're going to turn this around. Joseph Campbell. He described the process of creating a hero. Now, the process of creating a hero is first you have the person. And generally they are exposed to something traumatic. Like Luke Skywalker. You know, he went off to deliver the droid to Obi-Wan Kenobi. And when he came back, his parents were, his step-parents or uncle or whoever it was, was burned out of their house, right? And then he was kind of picked up and um, taken away and and uh, taken on a journey, some kind of a journey. But he went into the belly of the whale. There's like this concept of Jonah and the belly of the whale and the whale, right? Where you are swallowed up by something and you go into an intensive process of growth. You go into your personal process of finding out who you are, uncovering your talents, uncovering what you really want in your life. Now, sometimes you don't know what you want, but you can at least work on uncovering your talents and getting connection. My question to you is, what is the best way to use this period in COVID is it to go deep inside and reinvent yourself to come out on the other side, the hero? Or is it to get lost in meaningless things and feel meaningless? This is the time you have. This is the time you have to read that book, to make that change, to engage with a peer group that's going to serve you, to look for that peer group, to start the program, the thing you always said, I was going to do this, but I never had time for it. A lot of people now have time for it because all of the social interaction that you had before has changed. Even if you don't believe in the whole COVID, you don't believe in the whole pandemic, you don't believe in all the isolation and you're just doing whatever you do anyway, the world has taken a little bit of a pause. So are you going to use it? Are you in the belly of you of the whale? Are you taking your chance your time to build yourself or not. I think it's just important that we, if you do that, just take off news for a while. Mm. Use the time to, to work on yourself. And because we're gonna, it is, it is so much insecurity. It goes up and down and you get stats every day and it's so much noise. Just stop the noise. That's it. Put a limit to the kind of trash that's going in your head. All they're going to do is talk about vaccines and restrictions and stuff. Of course, follow restrictions because you need that if in your country, since the podcast is everywhere, there's some countries that are hit harder than than others. Um, I'm sorry for Australia and New Zealand. I'm sorry for you guys. God bless you all. I hope that uh, the government lets up a little bit. It's 
<laughs> craziness. It's heavy. Yeah, and they but, were doing but random. But at checks the same the time, you're getting one and a half year of pause. Yes, to restructure so you come out on the other side, sparkling and ready to go, ready to roll. Because the question is, when 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 the world starts rolling again and it's rolling as hard as it did before. Yep. Are you then better than you were going in? The same or worse? That's it. That's it. That's it. And unfortunately, people have a lot of issues they're dealing with. They have not made friends with the darkness inside. They have not been comfortable with it. They have not found a way to move that energy correctly. So all the negative stats from alcoholism and drug use and abuse of, bar of children and all of that stuff is way, way, way up. So my friends, please take contact with the people around you. Make sure that they're okay. If they're not okay, recommend them podcast, recommend them help uh, with therapists if they need that. You know, also just support them as friends. You know, when people are going through a hard time, sometimes you don't have the answer, but sometimes there is no answer to have. And then you can listen to the podcast that we had the last that last episode of season one. Yes. Where we talk about death, but then yes. the the... The point is not death. The point is how you deal with death. How you deal with that. And that and is the same when you don't know how to be with a person that are struggling. You just be loving and present. That's it. So before we go any further, I just want to say that it's been an amazing experience in season one working the podcast with you, Mara. Thank you so much. I appreciate you tremendously for the work that you do with the people around you and for your bravery and for your hard work you've done an unbelievable job with the oh, people thank you for you. surviving me <laughs> yeah, man, you, rock. you rock so worthy so worthy and by the way i'm just gonna call it out right now Whew. this is an athlete beyond all athletes you have taken the time during covid to become an unstoppable machine uh, yeah i've been able to um uh so far i've used covid to uh, uh find all my dogs yep and found the big ones and the small ones yep on one on side, the inside on the inside yep. i just have one at home thank god yep. but i have found the ones on the inside not you Eric. not you not you Eric. <laughs> <laughs> teddy teddy um really and and really work on accepting those really accept, accepting them and it's again it's not easy it's not pleasant but um it's much more fun now yeah and um that's the inside and on the outside uh because i still have a um, goal to become world champion yep going for 2023 whoop, whoop. Uh, in jiu-jitsu and then um before covid i was extremely uh, linear in my movements because i've been lifting a lot before i started mm. Um, I've been in the military for many years and I lifted for many years. So you get kind of <laughs> somewhat linear in your movements mm -hmm. doing that. Um, but I have time to, to do exercise on, on the ball and like the, you know, the big boxing bag, you lay it down on the floor and be able to move on that one. So I've been and You're I doing had grappling drills for people who don't do martial arts. It's like doing movement training, just no, trying you, to get you, your you body just, to be a, a whirlwind. I knew I had a big piece in my jujitsu that I didn't have. I, I was lacking, but never had time to look at before because it was always competition and always training. And and the the movement training I needed is kind of not necessarily what you instruct in a class. No. So it's, it's something nuanced. it's nuanced and it's something you you kind of you have you have to use time on it, but didn't have time. Mm -hmm. But now I've had time for the last one and a half two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been using time a lot on that. So I'm. It's gonna. I believe we have one and a half year of mm -hmm. insecurity and and changes still. So I'm looking forward to see what the next year brings. Exactly. Like you, you have different levels. You have like you have like um, normal unathletic person and then you have athlete and then you have top level mover athlete and then you have elite athlete right and then you have like 
crack monkey. <laughs> yeah, you're you're like beyond crack monkey. You're like top predator now. Yeah, well, it's we, like it's like the crack monkeys run from you. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. like yeah. I I, I I must believe you, but yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah my evaluation's clean. Yeah, so it's uh, it's but that this has been with being really aware that okay now I have the time, use it, use and it. I was lucky enough in one way that I I knew I had a piece of me that were undeveloped and under discovered mm. and under accepted mm-hmm. um so i kind of really fast got things to move uh, to work with like in jiu-jitsu the the movement um phase started very really fast because i had time and with the pro- in in the process right before covid we had a competition and i then discovered kind of i need to work on my emotional stuff because mm. i got a bronze which is good, mm. but I knew I had fucked up for myself because I was satisfied going in. Yeah. And I weren't satisfied. But right yeah. then I were. Yeah. Like, I can't have this anymore. Yeah, that's the that's the difference. Okay, let's talk about that for just a moment. This is very interesting. The difference between being happy for something and being satisfied. Um, satisfied has a root from latin that in other latin based languages means full like if you if you say that oh i'm i'm uh, saturated i'm basically i'm 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 satisfied saturated i'm i'm full right i don't want any more food well that's the thing it's like when you're going into a championship you need to be happy for the fact that you have gotten into the finals for example but not satisfied with the result yet you see you're not done yet you it's still like, have two more meals it's to like, eat. Yes, the 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 the, the hors d'oeuvres were nice, and that 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 first drink you gave me with the prosecco was delicious. Is nice, but guess what? I want some food now. Let's go. Mm. It's the finals. Bring on the main course. Let's get let's get to it. And desserts, stand and get in that medal, right? Mm. So you want to make sure that being satisfied, and the people often don't give themselves the pleasure or the happiness or the joy of accomplishing the Prosecco or the first fights or having done a good job with the work until they get to the finals or they get their their medal because they're afraid of making the mistake of, oh, okay, at least I have a medal. Now I'm, now I'm good. Now I'm good. When you start saying, oh, now I'm good, then you're satisfied. Then you're done. Basically, you've you've just told your subconscious mind that you don't need the gold. You're mm. done. You're good. You're good. But wow, I'm really satisfied. That's wrong. I was to say, wow, I'm really happy with my performance, and now I'm gonna get the gold. I'm gonna get that main course. I'm gonna get that main course. I'm ready for the steak or the fish steak. or chicken ooh, ooh, or ooh, vegetables. Ooh. Yes, exactly. No vegan lasagna, Marat, no vegan lasagna. Though we love some vegan lasagna, it's not that. But this main course, it's world championship. That's pure beef. (laughs) That's going to be good. So that process, use your time well. And know that you have about a year and a half of back and forth with this stuff before it ends. And then there's going to be the fallout and the readjustment, my friends. So... And what I mean by that, the governments are going to have to explain their actions. They're going to have to figure out how to restructure things. They're going to have to deal with people who've lost their businesses and lives and things have been changed. We're going to see that there's a lot of reparation that has to happen after that. So I don't know how long that's going to take. But it's going to be an interesting process. So remember, you matter unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light squared, then you're energy. But if you can't be energy, matter. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We hope you felt we added something to your day and hopefully your life. If you want to learn more, subscribe to our newsletter and find us at integrated-human.com That is integrated-human.com Integrated Human on YouTube and other social media platforms. Have a great day and thank you again for listening.
Love, Line and Upgrade from us at the Integrated Human Team.